Hi, in this tutorial, we are going to use iTacer for prediction of three-dimensional structure of the protein. iTacer stands for Iterative Threading Assembly Refinement. This program is based on the threading algorithm. As you guys know it very well that there are the three different type of algorithms which can be used for the prediction of three-dimensional structure of the protein. The first one is homology-based algorithm, the second one is threading, and the third one are the ab initio type of algorithm. For the homology-based algorithm, the most commonly used software is Modeler. For the threading algorithm, the most commonly used software is iTacer. But at that time, we will not recommend you to use the ab initio type of algorithm because they are not so much mature at that time. Now, let us tell you at that point, at this point, that the iTacer is so far considered to be the best server or the best program for the prediction of three-dimensional structure of the protein due to its high accuracy predictions. So that's why we will highly recommend you to use the iTacer in this time. Now, the use of the iTacer is a very simple. Simply, you need to copy and the paste your protein sequence here. Simply, you need to copy and the paste your protein sequence here in this box. And then you have to provide some of your credentials, like your academic email ID and the password. Now, from where you will get the password? To get the password to submit the job on the ITSR server, you need to click on this click here. So you need to click on this click here. And when you will click on here, then you will register yourself with an ITSR server and ITSR will send you a one password. You will use that password when you are submitting this job. After giving your credentials and the protein sequence, simply you will click on this run ITSR button. The job is done. Your sequence will be submitted to the server for the prediction of three dimensional structure. And after some time, you will have your three-dimensional structure. When the job will be done, then an email will be sent to you by the ITSR server. And in this email, there will be a one link. When you will click on that link, you will be on this page. This page will have your results. Now, the understanding of these results is very important. And that's why we are going to spend some good amount of the time in understand that in which form the ITSR has sent to you the results. So let's begin it. The first thing which you will note here on this result page is the your query protein sequence which you have submitted to the ITC servers for the prediction of three dimensional structure. The second thing here on this result page is information about the secondary structure of, of your protein. Here you are going to have an idea that which part of your protein sequence is going to make an alpha helix, which part of the protein sequence is going to make a beta sheet, and which part is going to make the coils. The, 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 the secondary structures are represented with an alphabets. The H here is going to let you know about the helix, the C is going to let you know about the coil, and the S is going to let you know about the beta strand. Here you can see there's a protein sequence and below this protein sequence you can see the C, S and H. Wherever there is H, this means that this region is going to make an helix. Wherever there is a C, this means that this, this part is going to make the coils. And wherever there is an S, it means that this is going to make the sheets. Below these alphabets, you can find out some confidence score. The confidence scores about the second structure prediction. If the score is near to 10, it means that the prediction accuracy is very high. But if a score is near to zero, it means that the ITSR is not very much sure that this polypeptide part is going to make this type of the particular secondary structure or not. Then in the next portion, you are going to have an idea about the solvent accessibility. Solvent accessibility, from, uh, solvent accessibility is going to let you know that which amino acid residues will be present at the surface of the protein while which amino acids are buried inside the core of the protein. Here you are going to have an idea about the score. If a score is close to 9, it means that the uh, amino acids are present at the surface of the protein. 
and if, a, if, if the score is close to the zero, it means that these amino acids are present normally in the core of the protein. We hope so that you guys would have a good idea that the amino acids which are uh, hydrophobic in nature, they are normally buried inside the protein core, while the amino acids which are hydrophilic in nature, uh, which are polar in nature, they are normally present at the surface of the protein. So here you can actually have a very good idea about the position or the localization of your amino acids in your protein structure, three-dimensional protein structure. Then below you are going to have an idea about the B factor. Now that B factor is going to let you know about the flexibility of your protein. And what does it mean by flexibility? The flexibility means that how much kinetic energy your amino acid are going to have. Now in this graph, if the scores are below the zero, it means that these amino acids are very rigid. They are going to have a less kinetic energy or they are less flexible. But if the scores are above this zero dotted line, then it means that the amino acids are going to be a flexible regions. For example, if in, in, our, in our protein, uh, the first few amino acids are going to have a very high positive value um, it means that these amino acids are very flexible while then uh, there are the some amino acids at the C terminal again which are going to have a very high positive value then this is again indicating that they are present in a very flexible region. After the B factor you are going to have an idea about the templates. The templates which are used for making a prediction about the three dimension structure of your protein. Now here in this template, uh, uh, template section, the normalized z-score is, is an important value. If a z-score is above then 1, it means that these templates are, have a good alignment with your protein sequence, the query protein sequence. So keep, it into, keep, keep these values in your view. Uh, if the scores are less than 1, then, uh, then, then the alignment is very poor and if this template is used in making prediction about your three-dimensional structure, then that three-dimensional structure could be suspicious. After that template section, you are going to have an idea about your three-dimensional structures of your protein. So ITSR will predict normally the five models, but that's not, that's not always true. Sometimes it's going to give you three models, sometimes it's going to give you one model, but normally the ITSR is going to, make, uh, going to develop a five different models for you. And among these models, you are going to choose the most appropriate model for you. Normally, the models are selected on the basis of C-score. The uh, lower the C-score is, uh, so the higher the C-score is, the better will be your model. But the C-score is not only the criteria on which you are going to select your protein structure model. There are many other things as well, which we will talk about later, on which you should select your protein structure. Below the three dimensional structure prediction models, uh, we are going to have an idea about the alignment of our predicted structure with the templates. Here you can actually see these are the templates which are used for making a prediction about the three dimensional structure of a protein in an eye chaser. Now let's assume if I want to align the three dimensional structure which is predicted by the eye chaser uh, on the template then I can simply click on this radio button and if I will click on this radio button then I will have an idea that uh, uh, I will have an idea that how much accurately or how much uh, uh, the my protein's predicted structure is aligned on the with the template or how much it is similar with the templates so you could have a good idea about the structural similarity between your predicted structure and and the, uh, the template which is used for, uh, for, for, for developing your three-dimensional structure in IT. Uh, below the uh, alignment section, you are going to have an idea about the ligand binding sites which could be present in your three-dimensional structure of the protein. Here in this three-dimensional view, you can see some pink uh, things. These pink things are basically the 
lying and binding side residues for example here i'm going to have an idea that the flanel anine 196 it could be potentially involved in ligand binding in my three-dimensional structure of the protein now this information is basically fetched from the templates which are used uh, for the development of three-dimensional structure of my protein sequence now below this one uh, we are having an idea about the uh, and, and about the enzyme and, and active sites which could be present in our protein structure as uh, right now our protein structure is not an enzyme so that's why we are not going to have an idea idea about the active site residue but if your protein is enzyme then most probably you could also have an idea that which are the, what are the residues which are making the active sites in your protein structure and again here this information is basically fetched or from the templates which are used for the development of three dimensional structure of the protein so this is a very brief intro about the ITS results uh, which you will have after submission of your job hope so this information will be uh, good for you for making prediction and analyzing the ITS results about uh, about uh, for your protein sequence stay tuned with us uh, for more informative tutorials thank you so much